last meeting, I also do out-of-state investing, kind of a little bit of everything. Like Bo, I, I work with Bigger Pockets pretty closely. I have a book coming out with them in December about long-distance real estate investing, how I buy in other states. And when I gave my presentation, I talked about how I kind of backed into real estate. I never, ever, ever thought I was going to be involved in it in any capacity. Now it's kind of like, like my whole life. I'm investing and I'm working as an agent. Well, when I was 19, I got a phone call from a guy that knew a friend of mine from a restaurant that we worked at, right? And I'm pretty sure all that he was told is, hey, there's a waiter that works really hard and he's talented, you should talk to him. So he calls me and he says, hey, I'm uh, Tim Rowe. It ends up being this guy, right? And I said, wait, you're the guy from all the commercials on TV, right? He goes, yeah, that's me. I'm looking for someone. I heard you're talented. I wonder if you want a job. Looking for a prospector. Now, I didn't know what a prospector was. Right, And it's probably a good thing I didn't because I might have said no. But I knew who Tim Rode was, so I just said, yes, I will do it. And then the first time we met, I had to ask him, what did I just get hired to do? I don't understand anything, right? <laughs> it was probably the worst job in all of real estate you could ever have, right? I was making phone calls to strangers that I didn't know how to talk to and seeing if they want to buy or sell a house. Well, Tim kept in touch with me for years and years and years and was the only person I knew that was encouraging me other than bigger pockets to keep buying houses. I knew that when I was looking at a deal, I could talk to Tim and I could ask him, hey, what do you think about this, right? We would lose touch for years and he'd come right back. Now, I'll be the first to say I was offering Tim zero value. I wasn't making an effort to stay in touch with him. Um, like to my shame, I'm not proud of that at all. I was just a young kid and didn't understand any of this kind of stuff. And Tim always cared about me. And that was something that I knew, right? Fast forward all this time and because of Tim's encouragement, I'm in the position where I am right now. I'm gonna be able to walk away from being a law enforcement officer. We run the top team in the, in the agency at Keller Williams in Brentwood. And I have a book coming out for Bigger Pockets, just filmed the House Hunters episode, all kinds of cool stuff that real estate's provided because of Tim. So I highly encourage you guys to pay attention to everything he says. This guy has lived it. He's not just talking about it. And he's now very passionate about a very cool cause that I'm very excited you guys are gonna hear about. I'd like to share a little bit about him. <clears throat> and ask you, are you feeling frustrated with where you are in your career and finances? Would you like to get to financial freedom quicker? You're in the right place, as today Tim Rode will take you from where he was in 1997, breaking even, getting nowhere on his wealth building, and overstaffed and under profitable in business, to where he is today, retired from actively selling real estate with way more passive income coming in monthly necessary to fund his family's lifestyle. He did this in less than 10 years. This gives Tim the ability to do what he likes best, take care of his family, ski, play, and run his nonprofit organization, One Life Fully Lived. Let's see how Tim was able to do this. So Tim, tell us where you were in 1997. I'm gonna use this. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. Hey, don't let me forget, I have a handout for you all, but I'm not gonna give it to you because then you wouldn't pay much attention. And uh, so, so David was right. Um, how many of you ever been in one of those places where you're mad as heck and you're not gonna take it anymore and it's just frustrating and, and you're just working your butt off and going like, like dog paddling and taking on water? Well, that's where I was in 19... <laughs> That's where I was in 1997, and, and in this place, I wrote out, I, I kind of asked myself, if you don't like where you are now, what would your magnificent future, if you couldn't fail, where would you go? What would you do? What would it look like? And I visualized myself like skiing 100 days a year, tons of passive income coming in, giving back, helping others get, get their magnificent life. And I just wrote it all out and I called it my magnificent future, my dream. And I'm gonna give you a copy of that. I wrote it in 1997 and I wanted within 10 years to be financially free living up in the mountains. And we moved there in 2005. I sold 17 properties with 52 tenants into our Cali craze and exchanged into a building lease to Enterprise Rental Car, building lease to AutoZone, own a, own a lot of, uh, uh, we do a syndicate of apartments in the South with a guy named Andrew Cushman, same, some of you may know of, um, through Bigger Pockets also. And uh, so I wanna kinda take you on a journey of from frustration to a magnificent life in hopes that all of you can do the same thing for you so you can um, find what smokes your shorts, if you will, daily and, and live your magnificent future and hopefully help me uh, make the world a better place. How many think that's a good idea? You like that? 
so, so as I said before, it all started with two things. Number one, a dream of a magnificent future. Tony Robbins talks about a big why. If you don't have a big, why am I waking up every day, busting my butt, probably sitting in traffic, going through frustrations, why am I doing this? What's out there that, that if I work hard and I, and I give good service to people and, I, and I'm fair in all my dealings and, I'm, and I look at doing all the right things, I, I too can live this magnificent future. I think we were all put here to live. So, so number one is, a, is an incredible dream of what can be, and I'm going to give you an example of that. And, and by the way, um, I'll also give you my email, and I've got some other stuff that I, I'd be happy to send you of other people's dreams and of other plans and stuff that others have done to, to get their best life. So, so number one is writing out what your dream looks like. Number two is taking an audit of where you are now. Um, where are you at financially? Where are you at physically? Where are you at in all the things that matter that will um, fuel this magnificent dream that, that you want to get to? And, and the next piece is writing out a um, specific plan, a plan of action of, of what steps are you going to take on a daily basis to do that? And, and um, within that plan, um, I personally set up, I called them key performance indicators. I, I listed and sold a lot of real estate and I invested in real estate and, and just taking the listing and selling side, I couldn't control how many homes I sold a month. What I could control is my actions. And, and, I can, and, I, and so I had key performance indicators of, of I wanted to work 18 days out of every month, which that's not that bad. Um, so I wanted to work 18 days a month. I wanted to make 600 prospecting calls a month, not that bad, or knock on 600 doors. Um, and, and I wanted to go on 40 listing appointments a month, take, take 15 listings, and if I did all that, I'd close somewhere between 150 and 200 homes a year, okay? So, so I knew I couldn't control this, but I could control this. So, so I suggest you guys take a look at what are your key performance indicators, no matter if you're buying homes, selling homes. Um, I, I, I heard you say you're, you work in the tech sector. You know, what, what can you do within your, your day job? I guess for David it was how many busts could he make? <laughs> uh, so so uh, that was a big thing is, is looking at my key performance indicators. And I also wanted simple, I called them um, being EEP. Efficient, effective, productive. I wanted to have simple systems that I worked every single day that if I just knew, you know, like if I, if I prospected uh, from nine to noon every day, I, I played a game with myself. Um, I had to prospect for three hours every morning unless I had three listing appointments. If I had three listing appointments, I didn't have to prospect. If I had two listing appointments, I only had to prospect an hour. I could keep going with that, but you get the you get the idea. So so and and nothing got in the way of that prospecting. That was the dollar productive activity that um, I was talking to this gentleman here earlier about face to face meetings or on the phone meetings or or listing a property or if you're buying or buying a property or or you know out out meeting with somebody as far as possibly buying something that's dollar productive activity doing all the paperwork doing all the um, talking by the water cooler that's not work that's that's um, you know that's the stuff that that in my world you would delegate to give you more time to do the the higher dollar stuff and now now we all know there's stuff you have to do that there's no way around it so so that, that, you know, you're just going to have to do. So, so to me, it's, uh, it's all about um, dollar productive activity and, and having key performance indicators and having simple, effective, productive systems that lead you to be as productive as you can with working as little as you can to get a lot of time away from work. Because to me, um, one, that makes a quality, balanced life. And two, how many of you have read the book, The E-Myth? Um, you're, you're working not in your business, but on your business. And if you didn't raise your hand, buy that book. It's an incredible book about um, 
um, mastering working on your business instead of just in your business and that's you know like having your head down and just going 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 and by the way one life fully lived and go abundance they've talked about we look at um, we look at those things as working on the business of your life if you think about um, you, you've got your career you've got your investing well those are just two slices of the pie and there and there's health and fitness there's your environment there's your spirituality and all the other things that that make a rich full life and my line's always been, um, if, you're, if you're good at making money and you're good at investing money, but your health is out of whack or your relationships are out of whack, you can't roll down the wheel of life with a flat tire. <laughs> you, you, need, you, need to, uh, you need to have the balance of everything or sooner or later, it's probably gonna come up and bite you in the butt. So, so the first step was the dream. The second step was the plan. The third step, and we were talking about this too, is becoming your own best customer. How many of you said you sell, list and sell real estate in this room? Okay, well, at, at some point, um, like, like from 1986 to 1997, I, my identity, and Tony Robbins talks about that too, is, is, is your identity is how you see yourself. And we were talking about how your brain believes whatever you tell it. And when you tell it I'm a realtor and I sell a lot of homes, then you're selling a lot of homes. When you tell your brain, and, I, and I've got one of my handouts is, Tim is now an investor plan. I, I literally told myself, told my team, and wrote the plan for, I never want to list another freaking home in my life. And, uh, and by the way, it took three years for my business to, to dwindle because people kept calling and I tried to refer them to others. And, uh, about the third time around, I'd finally come list it. But I, I had a, when, I, when I quit selling, I had a, a database of probably around 4,000 people. And I, I went from I want to list your home to I want to buy your home. And I also, another handout I have is um, my, flipper, my flipper sources. So, so I looked at it like um, a fisherman. I had a... I think there's 11 or 12 and by the way bear with me you guys I haven't done any of this in like 17 years so I I've been skiing and and running my nonprofit and having a lot of fun so this is all kind of off the top of my head um, but but uh, so so I had a, I called them like fishing lines in the water and I thought of I, um, when I wanted to list homes and I, and I don't want this to sound wrong and 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 when I started buying homes Every day I woke up totally insecure, like I'm never gonna list another home, I'm never ever gonna buy another home, and I was like a junkie wanting a fix. So I'd think, how can I get my fix today? How can I list a home? How can I buy it? And then, and then later on in my career, how can I buy a home? And, and I just thought creatively, who might wanna sell? And I, and I looked at who might be big sources for selling. I, I made good friends with my accountant, Byron McBroom, who's speaking at our One Life conference. Um, I made good, good um, friends with, with attorneys, with, with old folks' homes, just, just different places that, that might lead to multiple sources for deals. And I want you guys to think about that. Who do you know? Think out of the box. I thought of, I went down to the city of Manteca where I, where I did all my stuff, and I, I looked at red tagged homes. You know, who, I, obviously I went after notice of defaults and, and, and stuff like that. But I, uh, every day, I, I, just, I just switched my system from I'm gonna work expireds and for sale by owners to I'm gonna work all these different sources that could lead for me to buy a home. One other thing that I think was really important during that time, and if you don't mind, before I'm done, I'm gonna go back and look at my notes because I'll probably miss a few things. But I can't stand somebody that sits there and does a speech and reads notes, so I don't wanna do that. Um, so so uh, uh, another thing that we did while we were doing it was, was um, I forgot what I was gonna say. So now I gotta look. I just wanna make sure I get all of this as far as, talked about that. Oh, that was it. Um, another thing we did that really helped while I was listing and selling and also while I was buying was um, we tracked everything. We tracked the trends of what's going on in the market so we'd know when to buy, 
when to hold and when to sell. And the things we tracked is how many on the multiple listing service, how many homes are on the market, how many went pending, how many new ones came on, what's the, what's the, um, you know, what's the, what's going on in the market? And in, in 1997, you guys remember the floods of 1997? Um, there was on CNN, there was a cow on top of a barn in Manteca, and, and literally. And uh, um, right then, our market, like, like I've been through a lot of cycles from, from uh, 1980 to uh, 86, it was kind of like this. From 86 to 90, it went like this. From 90 to 97, it went like this. From 97 to 2005, it went like this. And from 2005 to 2000 and, um, yeah, it went, it went, you know, it had a lot of ups and downs. So, so in 97, right around the time of the cow on the barn, I went into buy mode. And from 90 to 97, I didn't buy anything because it was, it was going this way. It didn't make a lot of sense. But, but um, in 1997, when that flood happened, I was elated because there was a ton of homes on the market and no one was buying them. And I knew, I knew things had changed. I felt it because I was in the trenches and I was also tracking the trends. And that gave me an extra window. And I think from 97 to 2000, we, we, we just went on fire of buying keepers and flippers and land in the path of growth, things that could lead to, to you know, multiple, um, how can I put this, to, to um, th things drastically going up. And, and I'll give you an example. Um, I bought a piece of property. It had been sitting on, on uh, Louise Avenue in Lathrop. It had sat there for four years at 400,000 and it fell and, and somebody bought it and it fell through and I, and I knew there was a hotel coming in next door and I saw the guy sign up next to his house and I go, what happened? Your deal fell through. I hate you realtors. I'll never buy something. I said, here, I'll buy it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a large non-refundable deposit to make sure I come through. Bottom line is I knew at the time the market had already shifted this thing and with the hotel coming in, it, it had already gone from like 400 to 800 and about a year and a half later we sold it for 1.3 million and that's my auto zone that pays um, you know, like 6,000 a month. So, so um, land in the path of growth. Read your paper. Look at, look at where things are changing. Where are they putting on a new freeway offering? Where, where are things that you can make a, a big um, capital gain on? So, so, um, so that's step four. Step one is the dream. Step two is the plan. Step three is get started. I think David talked about that before. Step four is once you get rocking and rolling, you're exchanging into um, easy to manage keepers. And, and I talked about my, my, I just renewed my lease with Enterprise Rental Car for six more years. And uh, it's my old real estate office. And uh, they're just simple. I get from them in AutoZone, I get 12 checks. We paid your taxes, we paid your insurance in a 1099. And that's all I ever hear from them. And, and it's just simple mailbox money. Um, every, and now I'm at step five. All I do is water ski in other people's wake. Um, I, I don't want to work at all because that's not what, um, that's not what juices me. I, I, I'm not into money, to be honest with you. Um, but but I, I was when I, along the way of getting somewhere, and, and, and you need to be. To, to get there, but um, step five is um, find hardworking, honest people that know what they're doing and let them do all the work and then go do something else. So, so um, I, I think I'm ready for those handouts and while, I'm, while they're handing out, I'm gonna make sure I didn't miss anything else. Does, um, something else I wanna talk to you guys about is, is what I'm doing now and I, and I wanna, uh, I have a special invitation for you but before I get into that, if you have any questions, let me know. And feel free to take a look at my handouts. One thing that I really like here, I talked about changing your identity. My Tim is now an investor plan was I think circa 2003 when I was dead, when I went from dabbling into flipping and buying rentals to that is it, I am an investor, I'm never listed in another home. So, so I changed my identity, I wrote that plan and um, and, and then that's, that, that helped me get there. 
So let me make sure I didn't miss anything else. One thing I wrote is the, um, the challenge is some of you are in one career and you're trying to move over to another career. How do you juggle your day job while you put something new on? And you know what my answer is? Is you freaking cheat. You get up early, you stay late, and you, uh, you work your ass off is what you do. And, you, and you, um, you, you, know, you dig deep and find that extra gear to do the things that you've got to do. Because guess what? No one's going to do this for you. you know? it, it takes extra work. Um, so, so, and, and to just contradict everything I just said, <laughs> um, don't miss the good things in life. I, I, I'm very proud. Uh, I never missed a parent-teacher conference. I coached my kids in the Little League. I, I was blessed with when you're in sales, you get to set your own schedule. So why wouldn't you be there for all the big things? Your kids, look at those beautiful kids. They're only going to be there a while. Um, you know, the, the good things in life, don't miss them, John. That's, that's most important. Um, wherever you are, be there. When I was working, I never, people thought I was rude, but I never stopped and talked to them. Hey, how about those Niners? I, I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to be there. So while I was there, I was just going to just make good things happen so I could go be with my family. I could be out getting the goods in the woods. Um, and and uh, the, the last two things I wrote is live long and prosper and take others with you and give back. And, and that's what, uh, there, he's going to show a video in just one sec, but I want to talk about, um, I said, I said, oh, you can hand these out too. Um, I said I, I, I wasn't, I'm not really motivated by money. Um, from 25 to 40, I was very motivated by money because I, I wanted to, I never knew why, but I was hell-bent on becoming financially free and, and providing for my family and knowing we have that financial security. So from 25 to 40, I was laser focused um, on dollar productive activity, uh, uh, knowing what's coming in, what's going out, what's left to invest. One piece I missed on this, it's, I, I'm stunned I missed it, is um, defense. It, and defense is knowing what's go, going out every month. This is the piece people miss. People want financial freedom and they own two, they, they lease two cars and have the boat and have the RV. Um, when we were up in Albion, I bought Aaron's gas and beer for the boat and Byron's gas and beer. Let them have the boat and I'll just buy the gas and beer. And, 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 uh, um, like, like, I've never leased a car. I, 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 I'm still driving a Subaru I've had for like 12 years. I just don't care. Look at my jewelry. It's like, yeah. But the one thing I did is we, we own a um, beautiful three-story castle in the sky with an elevator that's 5,000 square feet built into a mountain. It's the one splurge we ever did. And, it, and it's because it was, I worked so hard to get there and I wanted, in my dream, I wanted a, a place that I could look out and it was in, incredibly inspiring. And I wake up every day just in awe because I, cause I, the place I live is just, is just amazing and, I, and I'm very blessed to have, to have created that. So, um, so now my, my day in and day out is all about helping people like you achieve financial freedom so you can help me, as my good friend Jeff Hoffman says, make a dent in history. You guys, you know what's going on in our culture. There's this, there's this crap that just pisses me off because people are angry and they're coming at each other and they're not looking inside for, for answers for themselves. And whether this is people on the right or people on the left, there's just too much division and not enough um, of us all coming together and, and looking for solutions for ourselves, our family, our community, our country, and the world. And, and so I created about seven years ago, um, I created a nonprofit called One Life Fully Lived. And our, our motto is dream it, plan it, live it. And our thought process is everybody has a dream, few have a written plan for their dream, and precious few are living their dream. So when I talked about before, um, One Life tries to help people like you go from, you're either, um, you know, if you know those four levels of con consciousness, 
you're either um, unconsciously incompetent, and I don't think anybody in this room is there, you, or if you're wise, you look up and you go, hey, I don't know Jack. And at that point, you're conscious that you're incompetent. And if you keep growing, you become consciously competent, and anybody that's in GoBundance or knows about it knows uh, GoBundance is a mastery level of all of this. And at that point, you're unconsciously competent. Think of driving a car. You don't even think about putting your blinkers on. You just do it. Don't think about shifting. You just, you don't even need to think about it anymore. You're just doing it, okay? So, so that's, in my mind, our duty as humans is to elevate yourself to in all those areas of balance, live at a mastery level, and then just by osmosis, just as a role model, you don't even have to say a word. People look at you and see that you're living at this level and that you just give off this vibe of, wow, she knows what she's doing, you know? And, and that's, and, and, and then your friends see that, and, and, and as I talked about it before. So, so uh, we started One Life Fully Lived seven years ago, and why don't we do this? Why don't I just play the video and then I'll talk a bit about it. So we got this conference coming up, I'd love for you. where you would have been with a small dream, so why not? We've got to start doing the cultural shift. You are the shift that's going to take place. One life is what the future is going to be. This is it. This is an amazing experience because you can feel it in the atmosphere, you can feel it in the room, you can feel it in the the way that people look and talk to you, they say hello, but they actually ask you how you are and they mean it. Everybody's like comfortable with each other. Whereas like when I go to some national conferences, it, you can tell like, hey, people don't know each other, people are lost, but here it's like family. Just think back to your arrival here. You were welcomed into the community, the One Life community. Johnny V himself, he welcomed you with his big heart. We heard from our founder, Mr. Tim Rode, who encouraged us to have the mind of an eight-year-old. Then we heard from Jen Groover. We broke for some incredible breakout sessions. Neil Godfrey came up and she wowed us. And we had an awesome evening of brilliance where we all were part of something greater than ourselves. And Jeff Kaler taught us so much. We create magic moments to show people that we care about them. Jeff Hoffman said, don't let the world talk you out of your goals where will you go from here what will the next year look like for you my dream is to become a teacher i want to be a nevada own my own business talk on the tech stage I want to open a restaurant travel the world impact over three million students a big stage in madison square garden go to the olympics So we decided to do the Dare to Dream Days for middle school, high school kids, kids just getting out in the world so they can have their best shot to create their best life possible. If nobody but you believes, it's still enough. Just quit letting people talk you out of it because they're afraid. My name is Antonelle. I go to Contrity High School and I want to be a neurologist. Hi, my name is Serenity. I go to Penny Packer Elementary School and I want to open a restaurant in Philadelphia. I see a lot of diversity and a lot of different people getting along. And that just tells me it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from or what country or what color you are, that you can still bond with other people and still have the same interests. 60% is actually showing up and the other 40% is actually showing up after you show up. So you guys making a conscious effort to show up after this everywhere where you go, not only in school, but in sports with your family. I realized a lot of mistakes that I made in Philadelphia and I overcome them so I can become successful in my future. It doesn't matter who you with or where you go to or who you are around. 
All that matters is that you do what makes you happy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And these are the people that we want to reach because we know everybody deserves a dream. Everybody deserves their version of one life fully lived. We want to help everybody dream it, plan it, live it. And that's why we created the Dare to Dream Day. about we're having a conference on October 21st and 22nd. Um, it, there, we, we bring in these tremendous speakers from all walks of life, everything from um, health and fitness to um, my spirit coach, Janai Lane, is amazing, uh, that, that teaches you how, how to um, co-create. And uh, one of the ladies that was on there, her name's Jen Groover. She's a world-class entrepreneur that talks about emotional intelligence. And this is for people of all ages, all walks of life. The beauty of this conference is people of your level will be there. And there's going to be people there who have never been to anything like this that are like, what in the heck is going on here? So I talked about people at... Uh, um, just consciously incompetent. They're just starting to learn all this stuff all the way to, to people at a mastery level. And we all hang out for two straight days. Um, people, people that are just starting out, we're hanging out with Jeff Hoffman at lunch, who's the billionaire founder of Priceline. And, and all of our presenters stay there the whole time. Um, people don't really sleep. You walk around the hallways at 2 o'clock in the morning and there's conversations over here and conversations over there. And it's a weekend. I talked about um, the E-Myth talks about working on your business instead of in your business. Um, there, there, this is working on your life, taking a weekend and stepping outside your normal day. Off. I turned it off for the video. <laughs> it's onelifefullylive.org. Okay, but then the code was Oh, I'm sorry. One life um, H I five. We like numbers. Number five. Will you um, write it down for me? I'll send it out, send it out to, to the meetup so everybody has it. Yeah. And there and there's one other piece I want to talk to this. How many of you didn't raise your hand? How many are not coming? Okay, so every one of you, this is for you. Because if you can't be there, um, that means you already got things figured out or, or you know, you got other things going. You're the people I want you to help me change the world. Because the 21st and the 22nd is about helping you all who are on your way and well on your way just crush your life. Well, what about all those that are just lost souls that never get this message? And on the 20th, we have a program called Dare to Dream. And I have an amazing video that you're not going to get to see of, of, of the Dare to Dream event we did in Philly. We brought in 500 inner city school kids. And we had, and they ain't going to listen to me if I get up there and talk. They just can't relate to me. But they can relate to our friend Diego Corzo, who a lot of um, my GoBundance buddies knows. Diego's a dreamer. He's 27 years old. He was, he was, his parents brought him here when he was eight from Peru. And Diego, um, before he got his driver's license at 22, he owned six pieces of real estate. He's now 20, yeah. Uh, he's the kind of guy, don't tell Diego you can't do it because he's already out doing it. And he, uh, he's now 27. He'll be financially free at 30. And we want to inspire these kids who never get this message with people like Diego and people like my buddy Will Little, who's a street poet from Philly. Will's 47 years old. When he was 18, he was in the gang in South Philly, and he murdered somebody. And he went to prison for 10 years. And while he was in prison, he thought, why did I do this? What a knucklehead. This isn't me. And he, and he retraced his life. And he said, well, I get it. Dad left. Mom's working two jobs. I joined this gang. It's my family. Dude shot at me first. I ducked. I was a good shot. 
And no wonder that happened. And for the last 18 years, Will has been going around Philly and now all over America helping kids avoid gang violence and teaching them the one life fully lived basics. And by the way, here's the one life basics. Who am I at my core? What's my dream? What's my written plan? How will I make money? And how will I be healthy enough to pull off this magnificent life I'm meant to live? So, so One Life helps people like you get there. And what I'm most proud of, now we're taking this to the people that need it the most. And on the 20th, we're going to have middle school, high schools, kids that just got out of being incarcerated in a juvenile hall, uh, kids that have been fostered out. There's a group of 30 um, Iraqi and Afghanistan refugees who are coming with translators. And, and I'm just so stoked about this program, you guys. And, and, and so um, I want you to either come to our conference or um, sponsor. It, it costs us two fifty per kid to bring them to Dare to Dream. Get, getting Will cross country and all the sound lighting, everything we have to do. Um, we'll have three hundred kids there. And and really quick, I did this in Philly, and the day after, this lady called up and said, "Who are you guys?" My twelve year old daughter was running around the house all weekend. I've never heard her talk like this. She's fired up about her life. She's talking about her hopes, her dreams, her goals. She goes, "Who in the heck are you guys?" <laughs> and it was so cool to, to get that phone call. So, so I'm going to um, pass out some, some uh, credit card slips. And if, if you could, um, if you sponsor two kids or more to come to this, I'll give you an hour of coaching. If you sponsor four kids, I'll give you two hours of coaching. And, and anybody that's coached with me knows that before we do that, I'm going to ask you to send over you know, what's your goals? I'll, I'll have you lay out your magnificent future. I'll go over it with you. I'll talk about where are you going with everything and, um, and, and especially what can you do with your real estate stuff to, to maximize it. So you can tell um, I'm into this. <laughs> this is, this is um, why I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning uh, with, a, with a song in my heart to make a difference. And I hope you can come to our conference. I hope you can be part of this beautiful mosaic we'll have there. And I hope uh, if anybody wants to come to the Dare to Dream the day before and be a volunteer, you're going to see something amazing. So, uh, Where is it at? It's at, oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> oh, not that good. Um, it's at the uh, Sacramento Marriott Hotel. We have a room block of $89 rooms. We try to, we try to do everything as reasonable as possible because we have people come from all over the country and all over the world. So, yeah? I didn't catch the sponsor rate for the children. Uh, 250 for, for one child. And if you do two kids, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do an hour of coaching. And if you do four kids, I'll do two hours of coaching. OK? So, so. Um, let me pass out. And if anybody wants to see more about the Dare to Dream, and, and there's a couple other presenters I didn't even get to, but those are the two really awesome ones. And I also have a flyer on it. I just didn't make enough flyers. So. These up? Yeah, yeah, if you could pass these up. And if anybody wants to talk to me after, I'm just driving back to Sacramento tomorrow, and I'd be happy to spend a little time. So, hey guys, thank you so much. Did anybody have any more questions on real estate? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I heard you say something that was very interesting. I'm at a little point. I don't know what to do. Okay. Now they own my place and I'm going to occupy it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got a. Hello? 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 Uh, I've got a place that I got a, I got a recipe to whip up basically 250 a year as an occupied tenant. Okay. But it's a lot of. It's going gonna, it's gonna to basically take me from a 12 to 12. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna bog me down. I gotta be the guy. I gotta be the owner operator. And I heard you say something about AutoZone. Right. It was your previous uh, real estate office. I'm at a dichotomy where I don't know whether to rent passively, collect six, keep moving and trucking, or do I occupy and create that cash register of an income? I think it would be best. Why don't we take a minute after this? Why don't you lay it all out? Here's here's my two options. Right, right. Yeah, right. if you could just lay it out, and if I if I could see it, it'd probably make more sense. Because it just 
I, honestly, I probably wouldn't give you a good advice. Yeah, I think I think that's a, a big question. He's like, it sounds like you would like go work. You can move in and operate. Ten thousand foot level yeah. question is. Yeah. Do I stay and occupy and create an income, or passively release myself from responsibilities, take what I can take on a monthly basis? It's still mine. And then keep trying. Gotcha. What would you do instead? Those were the two options. No, if you lease it out, what would you do with your time? Oh, what, uh, you know, basically it goes back to the hopper. You go dig. Yeah, that's. I think that's the key question. That's the, I, I think yeah. I kind of answered the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the. Okay. <laughs> Cool. That's a tough question. Anybody else? Anything on the either sources or the um, the investor plan? Any questions on those? Go. Get on the mic, please. <laughs> Talk to <laughs> Talk to and speak slowly. Speak slowly. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you talk about looking at the trend and all these um, like. The, the, the signs where the market turns, um, where you would recommend us to find those kind of information right now? Um, that, that you get from, and from the multiple listing service? Like if you, are you, are you an agent? Uh, no. Okay, so, so if there's, there's probably somebody here that is, that has access to that information, but it's, it's just gold to know, um, it's, it's hard to read the trends you know, you can talk to a lot of people and hear their take on it, but actual numbers mean a lot. And in, in my town, in 1997, and I don't, I'm not going to remember the exact numbers, but there was like 600 homes on the market in Manteca when I started buying and making ridiculously low offers. And there was 67 homes, I remember that number, in 2005 when I sold 17 properties and took, you know, just just crazy offers and and stuff that the last appraisal was 300 and they're offering 425 and they're going, don't worry, I'll get the appraisal. And I'm like, all right. So, that, yeah. If you ever watch The Big Short, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, go Mario. Yeah, I wanted I wanted you to reiterate something because it was something that I've picked up from Tim a lot, and uh, what he was talking about is his his cars. He's got a Subaru out back and a little Mini Cooper, and he could afford much more. But not only that, but what what I loved what you said about your house. You have the big house with the elevator and all that, and you did it for inspiration. But the other thing is is for anybody who's ever read Rich Dad Poor Dad or understands that, you bought an asset, not, not a liability. You bought something that will always go up in value, whereas a car is a depreciating item and something that's gonna be going down in value. And so there's like twofold. So I just kind of wanted to reiterate that and uh, something I loved about you. Yeah, actually Kiyosaki says your personal home isn't an asset. Well, true, but yeah. it's real estate. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but. Well, that's. That's what makes it worth it, is and, waking up and seeing and, and, and the other interesting question, because I, I agree with you, like if you listen to them, a lot of us spend way too much money, and we're not at the stage you are maybe, financially, but one thing that I heard from you was that um, you know during his time, he was grinding, right? And you probably didn't, at the time you, you probably loved it, but you probably got burnt out of that, like just pounding the pavement every day. Cause, you know, I, but I, I think the bottom line is, is that anybody who wants to get to that level at an earlier age than a later age, you have to grind for several years. Yeah, that, and that's a really good point is um, two things. Number one, I woke up every single day and cranked the song, Welcome to the Jungle. And, and uh, seriously, and it's just a cup of coffee. Just, just, <laughs> just tell me, no, good luck. Um, so, so, so I was, I was grinding it and, and I also, um, I'd get, because I was a good salesperson, a lot of people would hit me up. Hey, why don't you come work with me on this? Why don't you sell this? You can do this other thing over there. And how many of you have that thing of, there's so many different options. It's like a kid in a candy store. Think of you, you walk into a candy store and there's the, the malts over here and there's the chocolates and there's the gummy bears and there's the taffy. You know, that's what real estate's like, and that's what life's like. And, and it's very important to pick a path and stick with it. 
And then as you master that, you can add on, you know, I'm buying rentals, I'm buying flippers, I'm buying out of state, but you got to get that money machine rolling in. And I'll tell you how aggressive I was when I first started is um, I'd have no money and I'd write a six month escrow on a property and go, boy, you better get to work because I'd have to come up with 25 grand and not have it. And I'd go out and hustle and I'd make 18,700 of it, put 6,300 on a credit card, um, eat peanut butter and jelly and mac and cheese for four months, catch up, get it all paid off, get a tenant in there, have it all secure, and then go do it again. And I, and I really love to play games with myself. I like to, um, yeah, and, and you gotta look at your own risk tolerance and you can tell I had nothing to lose. So, yeah. And, and I've been going to um, One Life, I think this is gonna be my fourth year of going to these events. Uh, it's, it's a really good event. I mean, we don't get, I mean, we, we have breakout sessions on real estate investing, there's plenty of that. But I mean, really, I go, I mean, it's, it's a, I always feel very positive coming out of the event, but also, Every, you make really good contacts. So, like, I met uh, David Green there. Uh, you guys like Andrew Cushman, another guy. He's uh, syndicates apartments. He has uh, almost two thousand units now. I mean, th there's some really high level people that you can. Matty A. Matty Atchison, um, Hal Elrod might not go. Yeah, if, depending on how he's sure. feeling. Ma I think Mark McKee's coming. He'll flip a hundred homes this year. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there's a lot there's of lot amazing. of people you can just run into and. Um, You'll enjoy it. It's, it's a, I highly recommend it. I go every year. So, um, anyways, that's. Who else has a question? When is it again? It's it's October twenty first and twenty second. In Sacramento. In Sacramento, um, two hundred fifty dollars with the One Life High Five. If you can't go, or if you can go and you'd and you want to help us with the with the uh, young kids twelve to twenty one, really appreciate that. Um, I, I love what we're doing with One Life, where, where we're taking, helping take you guys up, but you can just tell my heart is big time with those that need it the most that are never getting this message. So it's good stuff. One so, Life High Five? One Life High Five. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna email out through the meetup the, uh, the code so you guys can register online and get the discount. And, and we have some handouts too, but I'll, I'll email it out too. And, and let me ask you this, how many of you want to um, do the, do, um, sponsor two kids and do the coaching? Cool. Come on, Mario, yay. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Tim, for coming. Yeah. Um, okay, next we're going to, round of applause. Thank you. Okay, we said we're going to do haves, wants, and needs. So, uh, anybody want to uh, announce the property they have? Uh, any events they're hosting or anything else they have, wants, needs? Yeah. 